It's fine. Hop off. 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 Hop it off. Hop it off. Oh shit, son. Like it's it's like you can see, right? I'm not I'm not I'm not out there. This is not just a bit. He he doesn't have the post not clarity. All right, he's frustrated. He's got a pop off. But anyways, I, I don't know what the deal is. So that's it. It was just body positivity. Okay, well, if that's the case, uh, this is our, our favorite Christian couple talking about Billie Eilish in a Vogue shoot. I, I don't even know if this is going to be interesting. This all sounds very low tier. I'll give it I'll give it a little bit. I'll, I'll sample. I'll, 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 I'll dip my beak. Whoa, caught my attention. What's going on here? Let's let's see. Let's read up on this a little bit. And I think it's going to make for an interesting video. <laughs> What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. In today's video, Billie Eilish on the cover of Vogue. She's got an empowerment. W empowerment. I looked at the definition. I think that's a good word for it. Okay. An empowerment dialogue, or I guess interview that they did with her. Empowering. Empowering <laughs> women's bodies, all that stuff. I was intrigued when I first saw people posting about this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's in what I guess you could call for, for the cover and then in, in throughout this Vogue issue, a bo is it kind of a boudoir themed shoot or? Boudoir. Boudoir. I was like, what yeah. is a boudoir? All, wait, all these words are so strange to them. I guess we could call it that. It was a boudoir photo shoot. I mean, ultimately kind of this classical lingerie, very sensual, very steamy. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't I didn't dwell on the photos, but I was just intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh no, Satan's controlling my penis again. Quick, quick, throw the water on me. <laughs> With, okay, it's Billie Eilish. What has her kind of persona, her public persona been up to this point? It's been baggy clothes, kind of the rebellious, baggy, crazy yeah. colored hair, and and kind of dark, even some would say demonic. I would probably say that to some extent, but I don't want to go too much into that right now and offend you guys so quickly. But <laughs> I, I, uh, I assume they, they're like this in real life. Like this is how they talk all the time. This is like dinner conversation. I, I'm going to guess. But, but a very dark, almost heavy, depressing music and like image. way she carries herself yeah image yeah so to see this it's like whoa Demonic. caught my attention what's going on here let's let's see let's read up on this a little bit and i think it's gonna make it uh it caught my attention you have my attention before we get into that make sure you subscribe hit that notification bell where we make videos on culture and social issues from a christian perspective is he praying while she's plugging is that a thing like oh oh dear lord yes please please make many people like and subscribe Yes, so so be glory unto God, thy kingdom come. So Morgan, Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish, one moment please. Hey Siri, how old is Billie Eilish? 19. Oh. Billie Eilish. All right. And guys, I want to just start this off by saying as I was reading. I think Homeboy is a little, little obsessed with Billie Eilish. I think, uh, I think he's, uh, he's been doing a little bit of research, you know, a little off camera research for this, uh, for this assignment. For this episode, I wonder who suggested this one I, uh, between the two of them. Yeah, interesting. Skimming, but I was I was checking out this interview that she did with was it British? Skimming. Oh, homeboy's been busy. Um, I found elements of it very intriguing. And, you know. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> I did. I did. I am not on here to just go after the, you know the life decisions and life mottos mm -hmm. of a nineteen-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But I think there are. Def I guess he like he can't masturbate, so he doesn't have the post nut clarity. So he's at the same time, I guess, a little bit upset. That's why he's not like laughing along with her. She's like she's trying to make this fun. She's like, oh, that, yeah, it's that silly. It's totally. It's okay, honey. Though uh, you know we're making jokes, right? He's like, no, I'm serious. I'm serious about this. All right. Very serious topic. You need to talk more about this. So 19. Still technically a teenager, but legally an adult. I feel like 16 and up, you're 16 is still so young and you are still a kid for sure. There are aspects of adulthood that you start to get into like from 16 up. Being in the industry as well kind of makes you grow up a lot faster. So yes, she's 19, 
she's also a woman in many ways. So yeah, she's a woman now. I think that's fair to say, but still anyone in their teens, there's still a lot of growing to do. So as I was looking over this interview, a couple things were standing out to me and I, I screenshotted and sent you some kind of a, the, the dialogue that I felt like was the driving force of this interview. Mm -hmm. And the, the dudes on here, I would not encourage you to go look at the images. They're, they're very sensual. I would say they're <laughs> sensual. But for the, <laughs> I wonder, <laughs> how sensual are they, buddy? <laughs> Those of you who are just intrigued in pop culture. Yeah, can we go ahead and address the the question that might be asked? Why are you guys talking about this? Obviously, we make videos on culture and social issues. This is a culture thing. We like to talk about this stuff. It's fun. It's One, fun. because there's not very many believers talking on the things that are happening in this world and sharing just a Christian perspective on things. Two, she, in her article, brings up a lot of different things, but one being just like self-image, self-worth, sexiness, and, and what that is and how to view that. Like all these things that are interesting topics mm -hmm. that are things being talked about already in the world and a lot of it being very pushed on women. And I think that it is a good idea as two believers to come at this topic from a Christian perspective. If you're on here and you already know, no matter what Paul and Morgan say, I just know I'm gonna hate their perspective <laughs> and I'm gonna comment and blah, blah, blah. Oh, like just, no. if you know you're not gonna like it, why even watch it? Peace just out. go ahead and just hop off. If you don't want a Christian perspective, which- <laughs> Cause it's funny. <laughs> it's, it's funny hearing you and watching you struggle with the fact that you really wanted to jerk off to Billie Eilish. It's, it makes me laugh <laughs> cause, cause your penis got hard <laughs> and you don't know how to talk about it and you're all frustrated. It's funny to me. <laughs> it's fine, hop off. <laughs> Hop off, 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 hop it off, hop it off. Oh shit, son. Kid, like it's it's like you can see, right? I I'm not I'm not I'm not out there. This is not just a bit. He he doesn't have the post not clarity. Alright, he's frustrated. He's got a pop off. Hop it off. Hop it. So yeah. Is that a real song? All right. So anyway, I think to do Billy and the article, the best representation, let's read a few of the main kind of moments from this interview. Here's one where the interviewer um, is writing and says, she noticed a TV trope where as soon as a classical hot girl entered a relationship, she undergoes a personality transplant. And then here's Billy talking. She's this completely different character of wifey, Eilish says, baffled. It really effed me up. Everybody's like, Dylan you cats, can't make you. a wife out of a hoe. And it's like, you're attracted to that person though. You created that person. And then the uh, interviewer again, if those are the terms, Eilish is out. And then back in quotations, suddenly you're a hypocrite if you want to show your skin and you're easy and you're a slut and you're a W-H-O-R-E. If I am, then I'm proud. Me and all the girls are hoes. And Man, why are we still having this dialogue in 2021? This is the dialogue that we were having when I was like awakening in the 90s. It's a long ass time ago. Why, why are we still talking about this kind of shit? Just and as a society. It, you know, let's turn it around and be empowered in that. Showing your body and showing your skin or not should not take any respect away from you. Wow. I'm curious as you being a woman growing up kind of in this era of women empowerment. Mm -hmm. We've seen it for a little while now. What are your thoughts on that? I honestly don't know what to think about women's empowerment when it comes to like body image. You know, it's just so different when you are a believer and you're confidently walking with the Lord and you confidently have your identity like in Jesus rather than things of this world and the way you dress and, and how you look and, and what, whatever like and obviously I like to look good obviously I like to take care of myself but like it's not really like this woman empowerment thing it's just like I just want to take care of myself <laughs> From reading Deep. more of the article, it's clear Deep. she's wanting to show you can wear the baggy clothes, you can be heavier, and totally own that, and that's body positivity, and that's good, but another <laughs> element of body positivity is to literally wear a corset, which it says in the article is kind of a controversial item. item. <laughs> First, thank you, Carney One, I appreciate it. Also, <laughs> wow, wow. Because um, um, it, it makes your waistline smaller, so some might say, like, Billy, why would you wear a corset and accentuate your, you know, certain curves, and then, like, hide <laughs> other curves? Just let you can't even see boobs <laughs> uh, you know uh, uh the glandular titty uh, the, the the breast milk producer oh god i said it i've said the word Let it all out show who you really are and billy's saying no that's body positivity too for me to look sexy and maybe and she says like she's not a big fan of her stomach so i can make it look smaller and just let me do my thing so that's kind of interesting it's kind of baffling to me how <laughs> that's kind of interesting <laughs> This is, I guess, what are these progressive Christians? Is that is that what this particular brand is? It seems like they're like they want to be a little bit woke.
woke. There's there's some wokeness to this in, in a certain way, you know, performatively, obviously, not 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 in any general sense. So they still want to condemn her. She's still a demon soul, you know. But the, at the same time, they're, they're they're kind of they're kind of proposing these ideas: woman empowerment, mm -hmm. body image, How big what a deal you wear, it is. blah blah blah. Thing has become that is isn't that interesting? Like, and I, I'm genuinely curious. Like, why has this become literally so front and centered? Yeah. Like, what is the reasoning behind that? That women they aren't progressive or, at all. They're Christian. They're conservatives. Fuck. Well, yeah, they're conservatives, no question. But the I'm saying progressive for Christians. Is is this like, like you know, there 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 are certain church denominations, for example, that allow for gay marriage, right? It's not Catholic Catholicism in any way, shape, or form. But there's other uh, denominations, right? There's like, uh, what is it? The 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 not the Church of Science, not Scientology. That's what I'm referencing. Not the Lutherans. They're still pretty hardcore. Not not the uh, the uh, the Day Saints. No, not Latter Day Saints. No, those are those are Mormons. Anyways, United maybe. Yeah, United, United. There, there, there are churches that allow that allow for certain things. I'm just wondering, is is that what we're experiencing here? Because they seem they seem to be one to talk about body positivity, but he's really struggling with the fact that like he obviously got a little bit stimulated when he saw the bubba. You know, he, he was just like, whoa, oh, just <laughs> temptation. <laughs> oh my. So th there's that. They're, they're trying to wrestle with this as well. You know, clearly he's he's a little frustrated as as we've already kind of pointed out and. It's obvious, you know. I mean, they they probably engage in their their Christian love cycle once a month or something. I don't know what it is in those type of households, and it's obviously through a sheet. It's quite quite orthodox, and it's uh, it's it's not as if they make eye contact and the lights are off. That as well, it's usually it's usually quite a quite a rapid affair. I'm I'm, I'm assuming. So I'm, I'm just saying that that this was probably a, a lot more stimulation than he's used to than than, than he than he had previously, or maybe that Hollywood. Because you know Hollywood loves this stuff. They're eating up these, you know, the little one-liners that I saw. Here's a one-liner that British Vogue posted in quotations from Billy. Showing your body and showing your skin or not should not take any respect away from you. And then another one-liner. It's all about what makes you feel good. If you want to get surgery, go get surgery. If you want to wear a- Man, we're so far. Like, we are just so far away from this in our ideology. I'm, I'm like, it, it, it's absolutely no problem if you are, like, a sex worker and you do porno. Like, if, if you do, if you, like, masturbate naked on camera. I'm like, yeah, you should not be shamed for that in any way, shape, or form. Like, you know, that's that's how far we are. <laughs> it's quite quite a long way from this, <laughs> you know? We're on, we're on the other end of the political spectrum. <laughs> or a dress that somebody thinks you look too big wearing, F it. If you feel like you look good, you look feels good. Feels good, by the interesting. way. It's an feels, interesting feels, perspective. Feels if you feel like you look good, you look good. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of angles you could go with this, but it does seem like there is just this very big push. Women empowerment. You will accept us. You will respect us. And we're doing this for us. And all of you guys can go take a hike. All of you men or naysayers. And a part of that is, is healthy because you don't want to be consumed with what other people think about you. Right. Ultimately, it's you want to be consumed for the most part with what God thinks about you. I was about God or but Jesus. But yeah. you start getting into some modesty conversations. Yeah, the whole, you know, you should be respected with... I mean, it's it's just, it's kind of rich, you know, people like this talking about it in this way. I mean, you're basically advocating for Jesus to be inside me 24-7. That's all you ever talk about. I'm not saying I'm opposed to it, all right, or, or being inside Jesus or, or whatever it takes, you know. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know, shame or kink shame in any way, shape or form. But that is what you advocate for all the time. That's, that's basically all you ever talk about. Whether you're showing skin or not showing skin, I can see the, you know, you can be, you should be respected if you're showing all the skin in the world, like. Like, every person around you should still respect you. And if you're dressed really, you know, slumpy and frumpy, you should still be respected too. I'm sorry, but like, there are just certain things that like, you would not show up to a job interview looking slumpy and frumpy. Big Perfect. baggy clothes, looking like you just rolled out of bed, haven't washed your hair in 82 days. Because she's, she's not in a job interview, she's doing a photo shoot. You, you know she's doing a photo shoot because she just showed photo, photos from the photo shoot. It's not, it's not a job interview, you, you don't care. Because you know that it comes off like you don't even respect yourself you just like are not taking care of yourself and we get it there's a place for wearing yes. whatever you want going around your hair and yes. like there's a place <laughs> for that see this, this is where it goes back and forth like it feels like they're trying to be a little bit progressive because they got to it like they're young too right it's got to be weird being young but being a fundamentalist like christian in everyday society you're going to be surrounded by temptation you know oh bubba's cocks goddamn it's everywhere now oh, so much sin so much uh, secular flesh temptation all around 
So that's that, you know they're trying to try to say, hey, fellow kids, we get it, we know, all right. You, it's not. I'm not saying you can't wear some things that are a little provocative. You may have noticed that uh, he's currently showing a little skin. You know, there's little little chest action going on there. You know, that's certainly certainly not completely modest. There's a, a few a few unbuttoned buttons. Okay, I understand. I see what's going down. But if it's the but, norm and if it's you're showing up to a job interview but, like that, you're probably not going to get the job. It's not because that person doesn't respect you. I think it's because the interviewer is probably like, this person doesn't even like take the time to look a little better, to look like they, you know, put on a shirt that hasn't been laying in the laundry. Not all. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you, Stitchens. Like, that's why I'm saying fundamentalist. Like, you know, if, if you are like a true believer, someone who practices. No, of course. I, I have friends who are uh, Christians and uh, they... They, they don't even go to church. They're just like, well, I grew up with it. I, like, it, it's a family thing for me. I, I just, I like the attachment that it brings me. Or I've, I had uh, one of my bosses was someone who was like pretty agnostic, but was also went to church every Sunday. And to him, it was just like, yeah, you know, I, I grew up with this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, in, in India, it's, it was just like, it's a really important part of my life. And so I was like, yeah. I have absolutely no hate on for anyone who wants to be religious, by the way. I'm very, very accepting to, to anyone who wants to be uh, or wants to engage in, in spirituality. Please go off and do it. I just don't think you should have, A, an exemption for it in society, and B, you shouldn't be pushing it on children and that kind of stuff, right? But I'm and scaring the fucking shit out of them. Like, definitely, like, you are going to hell. You will burn in the fires of hell if you touch your penis even once. If you look at, like, the secular flesh, you are now uh, in the fires and infernos. You have been tempted. Like, like, yeah, okay, well, then I'll be like, that's that's fucked up. Don't do that. That's like, that's torture. You're, you're torturing children. You're, you're definitely you're definitely engaging in child abuse, right? So that's that's where my problem lies. But if you just want to be religious, fuck, go, go off and be religious again. Inshallah, whatever finds you that kind of solace or comfort. I, I think there's like a huge a huge gap uh, where people will just like try to say that uh, any kind of like re religion in the left should be abolished. Like, no, you should be free to practice and believe whatever you want. If you want to believe in the great space cabbage that controls and sees all and it, it, it's what oversees us all and, and you know we, we must worship its crunchy ways I, i'm for that all hail the great space cabbage okay i i i, I am i'm for it I, I i will back you i just don't think you should have any tax exemptions for uh, ca cabbagery or whatever you want to call your thing right i, I don't think that you should that you should get not have to pay taxes or, or that you should somehow be absolved of this or that you should have protection from pedophilia if you worship the cabbage like i don't think cabbage worshiping pedophiles uh, should be exempt from being charged or persecuted. I think every single cash, uh, cabbage worshiping pedophile should be tried under the full extent of the law. Uh, I, I think like even if there's like a cabbage cult uh, and they're engaging in that uh, and something of like that, you know, some cabbage priests are abusing children, we should be arresting them. We should be, we should, and they should spend the rest of their lives in jail or whatever the punishment is befitting the crime that they have committed. That should be a thing. But uh, unfortunately, as we have it, we have some strange system set up where we kind of add and give them uh, more power within society. That's all, all I'm saying. Four days. It's just confusing to me. All of this <laughs> what the actual fuck is this rant? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was talking about the Catholic Church. I mean, I'm talking about it was the Catholic Church. That that was the Catholic Church. If you, if you couldn't have figured it out, I was talking about that. That was the Catholic Church. I was I was I was referencing the Catholic Church. I'd replaced Catholicism with the Great Space Cabbage. That's that's what that was. All right. If you're if you're confused, all right. That's 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 what I'm talking about. <laughs> and stuff. I feel like it's just. <laughs> I, I think let's let's focus a little more on the modesty part. And obviously, as Christians, you know, you can't expect the world. You can't expect non-believers to hold to the same standards you do. But even so, maybe like a 17-year-old girl watching this that's just trying to figure out where she stands on certain issues and body confidence and how she dresses and she's looking to maybe different sources. Maybe she's looking to Morgan and I. It's a good conversation to have. Yeah. And it just seems like Billy is very much encouraging because she has a pretty young fan base. Really owning kind of what you were saying. I can dress frumpy or I can dress sexy. And all that matters is that I am proud and that I love it and that I look good to myself and no one else has a say at all. I just don't, I, I think that can be easily taken to an extreme, and I think it is here. I just hope that the, the young ladies watching this do realize that there are- the Yeah, I was thinking that for a long time. The jumps are ridiculous. Like, how many edits did that, like, th that's just a regular sentence. He, what did he say there? Like, I was thinking to myself that Billie Eilish, like there, I just did it. I, I just said it out loud, but I was like, I was, thinking to myself about Billy, I like what is, is, is she like fucking like, Oh God, stop. You're fucking, you're getting off every time you say her name. <laughs> Do not speak her name in this house. I know Just what she say, does to I you. I dress however I want. 
I can wear as little clothes as I want and there's gonna be no repercussions. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for a good man, likely that good man is going to want a woman who dresses with decency. Whether you're a Christian or not, and Billie Eilish is, I'm assuming she's not claiming to be a believer. But That's, I, I'll, yeah, I'll definitely speak for, uh, you know, a, a, cis, a cis men attracted to women. The first thing I always think to myself is, how decent is she? You know, especially when I'm looking out, you know, you're just at the club or something or the beach or whatever. You meet someone who's like, I'm definitely looking for decency. Yeah. So the first thing that runs through my head, damn, she's decent. Yeah, that's a, that's a noble woman there. Very noble. Ooh, look at that. No exposed skin. My God, the nobility. Yes. Pure as the driven snow. An angel, if you will. Untouched. Unsullied. I know that she claims to care about others. I know that she claims to desire to put others first, which I think is very interesting because how can you desire those things yet also carry the mantra of, I can do whatever I want and everyone else better shut up and F it all. Mm -hmm. That doesn't go together, in my opinion. A man is going to see you in your scantily clad outfit and he is going to struggle with lust. And again, it is it is on the man to, you know, yep. not take act in the lust or, or whatever. <laughs> and I want to get to that because that's actually <laughs> Of this article. It's up to you to control yourself, you goddamn potential assaulters. Every one of you. It's up to the man to control his beastly lust, to not be consumed by it. Yes. Oh god, it's so hard. Oh, I must assault immediately. <laughs> the lust. Well. Yeah, but you know that, and you're like, well, I don't care. Well, yeah, don't really and that's care. the other thing. Definitely, definitely, women don't experience lust in any way, shape, or form. Never, never seen, never seen the ladies be horny. Yeah, no, that doesn't, that doesn't happen. No, no, not at all. Yeah, they, they just sit there waiting. Like, well, okay, I guess perhaps this one time I'll let you be consumed by your lust. Let, let us begin. And he's like, all right, baby, here we go. Time to pull out that bed sheet. I've already cut the hole. Because all you're worried about is you looking cutesy, you looking like the 2021 girl out there, whatever influencer dressed with her butt popping and her boobs busting out. Like, do you really care about others? Believer or not, Christian or not, like when you've got that mantra, that mindset, it doesn't go with the, I really care for other people. I want to put others' needs before mine. That's a fair point. And that goes for Christian or not, like you said. If you love your brothers in Christ, if you love your guy friends and you don't want to create this atmosphere of them being tempted to lust after you when they're around you, I would say, yeah, do, do us all a favor and dress more decently. <laughs> what the fuck is this Puritan bullshit? Like, <laughs> no, no. Control yourself, you fucking weird. Like, just fucking jerk off at home or something. Like, I can't control my lust around you. Oh my God, she's showing knee. God damn, I, it's, been, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've seen knees. Come on, how am I supposed to control my lust? It's, it's not reasonable. It's not reasonable, woman. Quickly, put a, put a robe on. Cover yourself. Absolutely a man's decision when he faces a woman and he sees a woman dressed provocatively. It's his decision on whether or not he's going to allow the lustful thoughts to come in and consume his mind to go home and do things. That's on him for sure. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is this is misandry, you know? Like this is this is like the opposite of uh, you know, sexism towards women. This is this is sexism towards men. 100% you know, this is absolutely sexist and unbelievably it's painting this weird version of men as being walking rape monsters. It's like Dennis Prager's thing. Like it's, it's entirely upon the man, whether or not he chooses to act upon his lustful desires and then do something at home that he may regret. Yeah. He may not control himself. He'll mill, he may follow a lady home. You'll never know. So ladies, obviously, you know, d dress decent. If you don't, you know, <laughs> it's only natural, right? That doesn't it's, it's mean not that on, it's the not on temptation, me. that the, the thoughts popping up in his head, like, that's not his fault. It's on the woman. Like, you're walking around basically wow. naked. So many women I see are wow. literally- Wow, that, that is just rape apologia. That right, like, that's fucking, that's really bad. That's really, really fucking, like, no, no, it's always, always the fault of the rapist. 100%, like, just, just no starting. There's like this. Thankfully, the law doesn't agree with you. Thankfully, the law. Well, actually, no. Fuck, I shouldn't talk. Sometimes there's court cases where it's like, well, she was kind of drunk. You know, she was she was drunk. She was dressed provocatively. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of sounds like she was asking for it. No, no, no. Rape victims are never asking for it. Period. That's end of sentence. There's there's nothing else. 
Trust me. As someone who's never, like, raped anybody, I can tell you, men can control themselves. It's, it's not like, no, God, the, the, fuck the temptation. Basically walking around in their bra and tight little short underwear skirt things these days. That's on you. Like, and if you care, will you please? <laughs> From woman to woman. Portugal the boy, is that how Canadians pronounce apologia? That's actually how it's pronounced. Yeah, like uh, years ago I looked it up because I, I used to say apologia, but that's no, that's not the proper pronunciation. If you if you look up the like how to pronounce apologia, it's pronounced apologia. Yeah. Rethink what you are doing. There are so many ways to look cute and fashionable and pretty awesome and beautiful gorgeous without showing everything that you have so at one part in the article she talks about sure but also if you just want to walk around naked you have a right not to be sexually assaulted like it doesn't it doesn't matter what you're wearing you, you can be 100 nude does not mean like well i don't know she's kind of naked that means she basically is demanding sex from every single person around them no not at all. Earlier on in her career, some type of getting taken advantage of. I think she refers to a new song where she talks a little bit about that. But um, it says here, scrutiny has left her fluent in anticipating criticism. She predicts the objections to the combination of this song and Vogue's shoot. <laughs> and then her talking, you're going to complain about being taken advantage of as a minor, but then you're going to show your boobs. She tilts her head and widens her eyes in a slow charade of contemplation. <laughs> then she swivels back, points straight at me and laughs. Yes, I am, mother effer. I'm going to because there's no excuse. Kind of meaning, once again, right, no my actions, anywhere. this is me. And you have no excuse. And obviously, she's right there talking about being taken advantage of. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I totally get that in any man that is taking advantage. So, so, like, is he completely excused in their relationship if he, like assault someone is she, is she then after the fact like well that was her fault like I, I'm, I'm sorry but she shouldn't have dressed that way otherwise my mans wouldn't have been able to lose control of his body so that's that's on her I, I i don't blame him at all like it's it's he's just one of god's creatures one of god's little beasts and what can i say that's all there is to it you know it's like it's such a fucked up mentality and it's incredibly sexist towards men all right it's also it's really damaging to the idea of male sexuality male sexuality can be a fucking beautiful thing all right it can take all different kinds of forms it doesn't have to take on stereotypes it can be everything it can be it can be fucking it can be sexy as fuck but goddamn you don't have to do this weird thing where like in amongst this all uh, the only version of it is is assault you know that that's it that's the only kind of way men can be is is fucking sexual assaulters so, you know, look out. Anyone in there, it sounds like it was with a minor. That's it's grotesque. It's not cool. Up. I think there is a larger conversation, which, yes, I am mother effer in regards to people who are saying, well, you're complaining about being taken advantage of, and then here you are on the cover. Here you are in a boudoir type shoe, showing off your curve, showing off your boobs. And yet we have <laughs> women complaining that, oh, guys are looking me up and down with their eyes. Guys are treating me like meat. There is no excuse for why a man would ever take advantage of a woman that oh, thank said God. no or made it clear she was not interested. There's thank no God. excuse. That's thank God. That. But then for the rest of your life. No, 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 but, no, but. It's end of sentence. D d d no, but. Fuck. What, what is wrong with you? Of course, no. God damn it! Oh. How you portray yourself is up to you. You can't play the victim your entire life. I, as a woman, have been had issues with men, <laughs> but I can't play the victim for the rest of my life. It was the men's fault, 100%. But I'm not now going to say- No but! It, that's it! End of sentence! The, the men in that case are the fucking the people who did it. That, that's all there is to it. End! No but! Stop with the butts! God damn it! Fuck! <laughs> butts are always the worst thing. I'm not a racist, but I'm not a transphobe, but I'm not saying that the rapist in any way is not 100% to blame, but... I get to do whatever the heck I want as a woman. No man better look at me in a lustful way. No man better be tempted to touch me. They, they will look at you. I mean, that's going to happen. That's that's very different. People can look at you. I mean, that's just everyone has is free to stare. I'm sorry. But yes, you're allowed to, you're allowed to look at other human beings. That's just going to be a part of society. We have to accept that. That's very different from him touching you, though, touching you against your will. Even though I'm walking around like a naked lady. Yeah, is this and I appreciate you saying that. And, and once again, no excuse for the man to act on this in any way. But let's pull back a little bit to simply, you know, is this 
a good message to be sending to teenage girls. It's choosing to not have discernment or wisdom, in my opinion. I feel like God has given women, like, intense discernment and intuition and the option to not want- <laughs> So many cuts and, uh, and tuition and of uh, rape culture is always the fault of, uh, I guess, the woman if dressed slutty shit. We have those choices, but I feel like some women just either, like, choose to ignore them and push that out and just do whatever the heck you want to do and play the victim card for the rest of your life. Personally, I feel like women, we need to step up and using our wisdom and using our discernment and stop living so much for the right now. Stop living for the world. And I'm speaking to you believers, like, we need to fix our eyes on the Lord. Why are we getting so wrapped up in women empowerment and body and True, true. We gotta fix our eyes upon the nicely chiseled Lord looking on down from on high. Let's just look right up that skirt, right up that robe, if you will. Fixate on the Lord. I understand self-confidence issues. I understand self-image issues, struggling with a lack of confidence, a lack of loving yourself as who God made you to be. I understand those things. I do. I do. But I also understand the incredible beauty that it is to walk with the Father and have this confidence. If you as a believer are struggling with these things and you're like reading Billie Eilish's magazine and you're like, amen, this is so good. I'm just going to ask you and challenge you to take it to the the father take it to the bible put her words up to god's words do they line up they don't <laughs> but you can figure that out for yourself seek the father on this be careful whenever hollywood gets excited about something right <laughs> whenever the media gets excited about something billy eilish media and hollywood comes along and just loves it and posts it everywhere and this is the message she is speaking what needs to be heard and so you're just kind of like wow billy said this they're all agreeing with it i'm kind of liking this uh halt go to more mature women that love god and see what they think about it Get in the word. Spend some time in prayer about it. Don't just go with the flow on it. Yeah. Um, so let's get to a little more. Over on Billy's Instagram, she posted I think, so, all of the pictures from the shoot. He's uh, so serious about this. I, I like. I, this is only the second one of these we've ever seen. So I don't know if he's always like that. But like, it's it's very just like okay. Now we have to get back to this. This is quite important, as I've said before. Boudoir theme shoot. <laughs> if you want to call. It. How, how did you not learn what she she told you it's pronounced boudoir? that or at least several of them she said thank you and she shouted out several names british vogue for respecting my vision and making this come to life so she obviously had a vision for this it wasn't all them saying billy let's do this mm -hmm. and then also one of her other pictures from this shoot i love these pictures and i love doing this shoot do whatever you want whenever you want f everything else <laughs> and so just kind of thinking about yeah. that theme that's obviously a theme of this Vogue interview, I was thinking the motto, the life motto of do whatever you want, do whatever makes you happy. Don't worry about consequences. Don't worry about anyone else. You own you. Do what you want. Mm -hmm. Like that can get, again, whether you're a Christian or not, that can so quickly lead to dangerous outcomes. There are helpful rules to live by. There are helpful boundaries to put up in your life. And when you say no to the boundaries, no to the rules, no to saying no, yes to everything I want, yes to everything that makes me feel good, yes to everything that makes me happy. Yeah. I mean, you guys would agree lots of things that might make you happy in the immediate are actually going to lead to bad things. Right. But we live in this society, because, for example, like food, cake makes me happy. <laughs> Don't tell me how much to eat. I will eat all the cake I want. And suddenly you're 100 pounds overweight. And wait a minute, we still have the media and culture and celebrities praising that and saying, yeah, you're 100 pounds overweight. Own that. It's almost like they refuse. No one, no one is praising that itself. They're saying you shouldn't shame someone if they're already larger. 100 pounds overweight is potentially unhealthy and not good. They say, well, no, it is good. A lot of them. Yeah. You can do whatever you no, want. No, they're saying the shaming is bad. But there are consequences to doing whatever you want. And so if celebrities want to keep pushing that motto on you, I almost question, why are you pushing that motto, that mantra, that saying of do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy? Yeah. Like, why are the fact that she's got a big ass tat, this is totally that new age kind of Justin Biebs Christian. Like, have you seen the stadium concerts they have? They have like full on experiences where like they have like really good like singers and stuff who will just sing all this kind of like modern electronic fusion kind of stuff where it's just like uh, everyone goes there. It's their equivalent of, uh, I, I don't know, Burning Man or something like that. Like that's that's totally the energy going on here. Are they doing that? Hillsong, really? yes. Surely Hill song, she's 19 years it. old. You've been walking and living in this motto probably now for a little while it seems you've just totally owned this mm -hmm. how happy is that really made you yeah and how happy has that really made the celebrity the other celebrities that continue to push that the ones that 
have had drug overdoses, the ones that have ended up in rehab for alcohol addictions, sex addictions, drug addictions, whatever it might be, yet they're the ones telling us, do whatever you want, any what, what is anything, what does it have to do with body positivity? What, what are you talking about? If it makes you happy, F everything and everyone else. Maybe we should start rethinking who we're listening to and who we're following. Like... <laughs> All right, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? We invite you into the conversation. Let us know. Do you hear us? Do you agree with our thoughts on this Billie Eilish Vogue issue? Or do you feel like... I suppose I have to participate in this. I feel like you should have wiped down the computer before you billied all over your pants. And parlay. I've done it, everybody. I, uh, I contributed to the conversation. I have, uh, I've done my part. I'm now a part of the internet, and the internet is a part of me. And, and all this stuff. You know. You know how it is. Hey, do, do, you, do you like movies? Do, do, you, like, do you like surfs? Do, do you want, do you want, do you want movies and surf, surfs watching the movies? So then come over to the new channels. It's the surfs. The cinema. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Can you do the thing, you know, that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives? Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like, just just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just it's not a great company. But hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our gods, I'm Raft and Xander Corvus. We shall build golden idols in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, our soft, spongy flesh is yours to command. To our lords, Evan Nudi, Trevor R., Alexander Thaler, Ryan Lubin, bisexual black gamer, Toe Fox, and Jeffrey Lamb, we proudly carry your sigils onto the battlefield. And to our knights of the round table, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, Multimondi, Timothy Hart, Trevor Janice, Lemmy 101, Anthropophagic, Saren 42, Chronic to Hemp Hog, Kelly Kotka, The Great Poudini, Von Janney, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, J. Fraser Cartwright, Jimmy Big Nuts, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Nicholas Marks, Jopi, Josh Mickelson, Melissa Murphy, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, and Constance Joyce Lacheris. We tip our cap and lift our mug and salute you.